I recently discovered a brand new Google Shopping ad strategy which has completely blown me away. And in this video, I want to break down this entire strategy step by step for you so you can implement it within your own e-commerce brand and scale it to the very next level. Now, this strategy is very interesting because this is an account which we started recently handling about 14 to 20 days ago under my Google Ads agency or marketing. And what they had done was they had done something called portfolio budgeting strategy. Now, they have a bunch of different campaigns here if we go back right here and just look at how many different campaigns they have we can see they have a, a total of roughly 15 different campaigns running as a lot of these campaigns we have launched now we have updated because we've been working with them for about two to three weeks at this point but as we can see the results have been pretty drastic and increasing within the last 14 to 30 day period i mean in the last 30 days we have done roughly three hundred eighty thousand dollars in revenue at a 4.35 extra wise it's increased by four percent because we are now consistently making changes with this strategy i saw within this ad account the roas has also increased now moving on over to the actual strategy as I mentioned, this is a portfolio budgeting strategy. This is mostly done with Google Shopping campaign or standard shopping campaigns in general. So that's what we're gonna be focused on here. Now, before we go into the actual nitty gritty details of this approach, how to implement it, etc., let's first go over kind of how it works. And most important of all, the pros and cons of this strategy. First of all, portfolio budgeting strategies where basically you have one budget across three or four or five, how many ever you like different amounts of campaigns. And if you know Facebook ads, if you know how meta ads work you know this is more like a cbo where you have one cbo you have five ad sets or two ad sets whatever it is and your budget is set on the uh, campaign level same situation here it's set on a very broad account level and it's distributed across four or five or how many ever you like different campaigns now the pros of this approach is number one it allows you to do segregation based on individual brands and individual products because if we go inside each of these which i will do very shortly you'll see that these campaigns we have set up to be segregated based on each individual product each ad group is for a specific product or it's for a specific sub collection so if you have for example example a skincare brand where you have multiple different sub products sub categories for the face for the hands for the feet etc then you can create a portfolio budgeting strategy and each ad group can go for each individual collection separately and this makes the, the entire approach a bit more granular because now instead of you going in instead of you setting some random budgets instead of you letting the campaign spend as they would like individually you can now implement the google ads algorithm into the mix because this budgeting strategy what happens is it's going to favor certain campaigns over others so in the last 30 days this first campaign was kind of favored more that's why it spent sixteen thousand dollars this one was favored a bit less that's why i only spent four hundred dollars but that's the main goal behind a portfolio budgeting strategy that's why it works so well because instead of testing individual products on it within a campaign this reduces the amount of pressure each single campaign has so now you distribute this pressure uh, across three different campaigns or four different campaigns so it's a lot more granular it allows it adds more power to the algorithm in general which is another pro for this because the budget where it gets distributed how much it's all chosen by the algorithm you don't have to worry about it you don't have to exclude products unnecessarily because if the products within the campaign are bad that entire campaign will probably get a lot less budget but this now brings me to the cons of this strategy the first big con is that it can actually limit your testing abilities because as i mentioned earlier if there's one product or multiple products let's say out of five three of the products within the campaign are bad well, now if the two that are left over are good, they still won't get tested properly because this portfolio budgeting strategy kind of made that entire campaign a bad campaign. It just kind of labeled it as a low quality campaign. Now it's gonna spend that money on the other campaigns out there. And second biggest con is there is a little bit of long-term scalability issues. I mean, even though we have four different campaigns running under the portfolio budgeting strategy, in total, the campaign that has spent the most money is of course still the performance max. These two RP max campaigns are spending the most money here. Now that's all is going to be something you deal with with the portfolio budgeting strategy it's just not that scalable long term especially if you want to do thousands and thousands per day but that does not mean it's not worth giving a try i still believe this is a great strategy to implement because if we look right here in the last 30 days we have done roughly one hundred fifteen thousand dollars just from these four campaigns alone under the portfolio budgeting strategy the ROAS is more than the account level of a 4.45x where the account level is just a 4.35 so I would personally say these are performing a lot better than the account average which is exactly what you want now 
the way to implement this and the way it works is fairly simple. First of all, you're going to have other performance mask image running on the sidelines. That's just the name of the game. There will be a little bit of overlap in terms of products with this approach. But the way we have set it up is we have set up some of these campaigns to be high priority. Like this first one, this is targeting the USA only. This is a high priority shopping campaign. The second one, it's also for the US. It's a medium priority shopping campaign. And the way it works is for the high priority campaign, which is this first one right here, spending the most money. The only difference between these two is the actual target ROAS value we have set. For this first campaign, we have set a target ROAS that we are expecting this campaign to hit. This means you have to go within the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and look at the ROAS, which your account has been achieving, and set that value as a restriction within this high priority campaign, because this is our highest priority. We want to spend as much money as possible and be realistic about what return on ad spend we want so that's why we set an account average ROAS now the thing is the same products or a lot of the similar products will also be within this medium priority campaign right here but the only difference is the actual target ROAS value which we set here as a restriction now for this campaign we're gonna set the restriction to be a little bit higher than what we want to achieve so let's say for example the account wide ROAS right here has been a 4.35x for example so this first campaign will have 435 percent as a restriction but this second campaign because it's medium priority it's not going to be first of all spending as much money as the first campaign because this second campaign will only start spending money after the first campaign's budget has been depleted but that's why we set the restriction a little bit higher we don't want this campaign to become active at like 9 p.m at night and then within three hours from 9 p.m to 12 a.m it spends its entire 400 dollar budget so to prevent that we set a target rise that's a little bit higher maybe 5x so 500 percent here and we let this be a bit more profitable so you see right here that's why this has a 4.39 extra rise this one is 4.30 it's not spending as much money but it's not designed to because first of all we have set a bit of restriction and second the portfolio budgeting strategy it's redistributing the budget across these two as needed which is the beauty about this approach now if you have a performance mass campaign that's focused heavily on the assets because you added in a bunch of asset groups to a pmax campaign this standard shopping approach with portfolio budgeting it's going to add double power to win the auctions with google shopping because now again it's portfolio based so it's not a one individual product or not one individual campaign going into the auction it's like a group of campaigns going into the auction together so it adds a bit more power it gives you the ability to not only rank one product within the top out of top 10 with shopping but actually rank multiple that's only because we added a little bit of power to the overall auction but because all these nitty-gritty details and all these intricate details this these campaigns actually work separately from each other they're not really going into the auction and bidding one against another another like you would if you had just individual standard shopping games running along with a pmax and that's why there is very minimal overlap it might seem like this campaign strategy is all over the place you have the same products across all these different campaigns and whatnot but the reality is pmax is always going to first deplete its budget so there's no overlap there once that's done then all these campaigns will go together into the auction and then from what google thinks is a better kind of place to rank your products for that's when it will win that auction so if it thinks for example the first products here within this campaign will win the auction then it will only rank that one so there's not bidding against this one right here so that's where the minimalistic overlap approach comes but this is perfect for brands that aren't really finding performance max too profitable let's say you have performance max already running but it's just not where you want it to be you're not scaling past a certain level and I, I, we do this for a lot of the brands we handle by the way under my agency or more by the way if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year if you need extra help scaling your brand to the next level go on to my website at euromarketing.com and schedule a free call with me and let's see if we can potentially work together and make that happen but it's also perfect for brands in extremely competitive niches. If you were selling like, for example, a high-end designer clothes, purses, skincare, supplements, anything like that, this started strategy is worth a try because this will add a double power to your options, which is exactly what you want. And most important of all, if you have multiple sub collections, like you have an individual category of products or multiple categories of products where there's a select few products in each category, this kind of approach can work extremely well because now it will go rank that individual collection or the individual subcategory individually and it will try to rank them as needed but again if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year you need extra help scaling your brand to the next level go on to my website the link is in the description below and in the comment section and schedule a free call with me and let's see if we can work together to scale your brand to the next level